iconic black and orange is increasingly rare. Number of monarchs migrating from the U.S. and Canada to Mexico has dropped to its lowest level in more than 20 years. Could you imagine a world without them? Have hundreds of millions of monarchs and now we're down to maybe 20 to 50 million in just in just a few short years. Scientists say the winged wonders are being hit from all sides. Monarchs face changing weather conditions, pesticides, and fewer milkweed plants. They say if the trend continues, the only way to remember the monarchs in the Midwest may be through pictures. Milkweed is the lifeblood of monarchs. That's what they lay their eggs on. So if there's no milkweed, there's no monarchs. Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and this is a video series on how to plant milkweed. Last year we had a video series on how to help raise the monarch, and hopefully you've, you've seen that. If not, I urge you to go check it out. But really the way to help out the monarch beyond just raising it from eggs is to actually plant milkweed. So that's what this video series is all about. This is part two. In part one, we showed you how to find and collect seeds, whether it be from nature or some good online sources where you can get them. Then we also showed you how to set them up to germinate them. In this second part, we're going to now show you where we left off with the germination, what ends up happening to the, uh, to the seeds once they've sprouted, how to further take care of them, and then how to tell when they are ready to just be planted into your soil. Our seeds have been germinating since April and so we're gonna check and see how they're doing now. I've got some footage here from May and then we'll show you what they look like here in June. You might remember that we started this germination process on April 11th and it took a lot of soaking. I was honestly worried the first two weeks that nothing had happened but after 18 days of soaking here we are on April 29th and I did have some of the seeds start to emerge, start to sprout. After this happens, the process actually becomes pretty quick. Why some seeds sprout before others, I'm not exactly sure. It might just be the amount of moisture that they end up soaking up. And once they get started, they're really off and running. Here we are on May 3rd, 22 days of soaking. That's just four days later. And they've already got some leaves starting to emerge and break out of the seed pods. Now, I did this in April, but keep in mind, you can start this also sometime during the summer, too. Last year I did this in late July, and it was in uh, late August that I ended up planting the milkweed, and it survived, and it's here this year as well. We'll show more of that in part three. And now just a few days later, here's May 7th, and these little sproutlings are definitely ready to be transferred into some dirt. Okay, it's May 7th, and so it's been 26 days, and our, our seeds are definitely ready. They have sprouted, and they're tall enough now to where I do want to transfer them into some soil. And they've had already a good start, we're just going to keep that good start going. I have some dirt here from my garden, and for this step you could certainly use potting soil if you wanted to spend the money on it, but I'm trying to show you how to do this the most cost effective, or in other words, the cheapest way possible. You shouldn't have to spend a lot of money to help save the monarchs. Uh, I did buy the small plastic uh, starter pots for this, but you could use something like Dixie Cups if you wanted to go even cheaper. I'm putting in about a half inch of soil in there, so once you have a half inch of dirt, more or less, you can start to transfer in your, your seedlings. Place them in there, so that way the roots are touching the dirt, and you can push them down a little bit, but be gentle. These guys just got their fresh first start at life. Uh, you want to put them in, though, enough so that way the... The stem is mostly facing up, and once it starts growing, it will take care of that and straighten up and head towards the light on its own, but try to give it a good uh, good position before you cover it in with dirt, which we're about to do here in a little bit. Now you might find, if you're using my method, that some of the, the seedlings may have had their roots creep into and even puncture through the paper towel. If this happens, just hold at the base of where it's pushed into the paper towel and steady pressure, you should be able to pull it out had pretty good luck doing that. Once they're in there, then you're going to add in about a quarter inch of dirt on top, and this is just to cover up those roots, and then also give it a little bit more support so that way it can stand straight up. 
if while you're doing this you do have any rocks or other plant debris try to remove that from the soil just as you were doing before but about a quarter inch on top and they should be good to go so we've got all of our freshly sprouted milkweed now they're in the dirt they got a good half inch to grow their roots into and they're covered with about a quarter inch if you had any that still had the seed casing on them they hadn't fully come out just go ahead and let nature do its job it'll take care of it on its own and you're just going to moisten and water the soil then we're going to place this in someplace sunny. Now if you're like me, you might have access to a, a lamp that produces ultraviolet light, a nice good sun lamp. I have them because I have reptiles that need them anyway. But if you really wanted to get proactive about it, you could get that kind of a lamp and you can, you can give them plenty of sunlight, which we'll show you here in a second. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just water them and make sure that the soil is nice and moist. The first time you go to water them, they'll probably soak up more moisture than normal, but once the dirt is moist, that's about all you need. Don't overwater them, but don't let them dry out either. I added just a little bit of water once a day just to make sure that the moisture was retained. Now you don't have to do this next part, but because I have reptiles, I've got plenty of these ultraviolet light bulbs lying around that they bask in. So any brand will work, and if you want to pay the cost, you can give your fresh plants some ultraviolet light but again, you don't have to do this. You can just use natural sunlight if you wish. This will help them grow a little bit faster. But otherwise, place them someplace where they're going to get sunlight, but not direct sunlight. Uh, direct sunlight beating down them could dry them out. So a partially shaded area where some indirect sunlight will come in is just fine. And your seedlings will start to grow and mature. And Also during this time, if you've got extra seeds, Feel free to keep on starting them and germinating them, and uh, some of your plants are probably going to die. They're just not going to make it, so having a fresh batch ready to go also just helps you keep things going. These are the plants a full month after transfer, June 7th, and we have some that have multiple leaves, some six, some up to eight, and then 43 days after transferring, June 19th, now they're tall enough, they're ready for some real dirt. It's June 19th. Some of our milkweed now is ready to go and to be transplanted into where we're actually going to have it be its permanent residence. So some of these taller plants, in fact, are the very same seeds that we started back in the first video. But I've also kept this uh, system going. So I've got some younger ones here that were more recently transplanted into uh, our little containers. And then I have continued to germinate seeds too, just so I've got just a continuous run of these plants continuously growing. And something else I'm doing is I am playing the numbers. You're going to have some deaths along the way. Some of these plants are not going to make it. So when you do have some of those not making it, that's why I did an abundance of plants that way I can really see which ones, which ones do naturally survive better. Once they get to be about this height, their root systems, they've saturated the dirt, and there's not much more we can do for them other than put them into where the roots can then spread out. So in the third video, that's what we're going to show you, how to correctly transplant them from our little containers into a good location, also show you how to select a good location for them, a place where they might not be mowed down, whether that be in your yard or uh, selecting areas where maybe they can grow naturally and cause some more wild growth. So check out the third video series, and if you haven't yet, also take a look at the Raising Monarchs series. Thanks.